Hey guys, today we are talking about the skin of your house. And since I, like probably most of the ladies in your home, am the expert in glorious, glamorous skin, <laughs> I wanted to do the intro here because there is a point that Corbett and I have been talking about that I really want to make. The skin is the most important system on your body and... Yeah, and it's the most important system on the house. And it's the biggest organ in your body and it's the biggest system in the house. So this skin thing, the sheathing specifically, uh, is a weather resistant barrier, what we're installing behind us here. This one is called Georgia Pacific Force Field. It's an all-in-one WRB, and that means that it can control a bunch of things. But, but, but here's the point that I really wanted to make and why I'm here, is um, when it comes to your own skin, guys tend to like what? A bar of soap. Ladies like a little more multifunction, right? Because we really want to exfoliate away the dead skin cells, moisturize, tone, do all those things. And when it comes to a house, you need all those things. You don't just want to put up a bar of soap. This is the beautiful marriage of both worlds. Yes, it is a great analogy. <laughs> this system is going to take care of water control, air leakage control, and vapor diffusion control all in one. And it's the structural sheathing of our house so that we're saving time because we were going to be installing this anyway because the structural engineer said we need it. But this is going to eliminate the extra steps. All we have to do now is come along and tape. And we're going to talk about tape because if you watch this channel, you know we love, we love tape. tape. But first, let's go ahead and see how this stuff goes up. You can see that we just hung it on the wall. I'm sure that there will be 1,000 comments on easier ways than this to do this as we move forward. But I have my mom and dad, I have myself, I have my clamps, I'm happy with this trick. This makes it about 20 minutes per panel to put up. We've got quite a bit of panels on this 3,000 square foot house to put up, but this is, a, I'm not worried about trying to make it faster, faster, faster all the time. I think that's kind of a disease, trying to get everything faster and cheaper. One thing that's really an important detail right down here is that we need to have the right amount of clearance from our foundation wall. What we are doing, the reason we did not sheathe these when they were framed on the floor of the house and then raise them up is that as you can see, we're all the way down. Dad, I'm going to lift this up real quick. You can see that we're covering the rim joist and the sill plate. When we can cover all those extra details, the extra seams that are going to be air leaky, potential water intrusion places, we're doing an extra little bit of work. We wanted to get all the way down towards the foundation wall, leaving at least a quarter inch gap, according to Georgia Pacific. What I'm trying to do is prohibit moisture from coming from the concrete exposed here up and jumping into my OSB at the bottom. We're going to come along and tape this seam uh, in just a few minutes with the Georgia Pacific team. But what I wanted to make sure you understood is that we could not finish this foundation wall and then backfill and put on the insulation, et cetera, until we got this thing on because this detail gets sealed directly to the concrete. Then this gets sealed on top of it. So we're gonna go ahead and start squaring this up and making sure that it's ready to receive the nails. Then we're gonna go ahead and fasten it in place. Now I'm attaching here every six inches on the edges and every 12 inches in the field. This wall right here is called a shear wall and this one required three inch on center nailing. We're just following the structural engineer's notes but if you don't have one of those, you need to make sure that you're up on all this stuff because even the difference between a shear wall and a non-shear wall, I'm not completely clear on but you need to know what you need to know to make sure that you keep your family safe and the build going well. So on this nail gun, we've got this tip, which is flat and nice and soft, not going to poke holes in my membrane. Really important. It also is going to add a little bit of extra depth, so it'll tend to underdrive the nails. That's what is happening when you see us come along and tap in a lot of the nails that are sticking a little bit out too proud from the wall. You want them to be flat. What you want them to look like is this right here. You can see this one, this one. This one, perfect, all these. You can see this is little bits of plastic that hold the nails together inside the nail gun. Now there's a couple things that you need to remember. Anything on this channel will be about the fact that it is always a system. Don't ever install a product thinking that that one product is gonna solve all your problems. That is the route to insanity. What you wanna do instead is do what we're doing here and have an excellent sheathing product that is a weather resistant barrier and then protect this with two inches of exterior insulation 
and protect that with a rain screen that's an inch deep and protect that with siding that is lapped appropriately and is as watertight as it can possibly be and then protect all of that with three feet of eaves. This is part of a system. This is not going to be exposed to the elements. Even if we have overdriven nails, it is almost 0% chance that any water is going to get past all of my systems and make it all the way to here. And if it does do that, that's okay too, because this is not a vapor barrier. It's not going to stop vapor that gets inside the wall from evaporating out. We also will have another vapor uh, intelligent vapor permeable membrane on the inside of the house. So this wall can dry out if it needs to. All that stuff is just sound building science. And we're leaving an eighth inch gap on the all long edges and short edges because this stuff does expand and contract when it gets humid, when it gets dry. The easiest way is just to use a nail, drive it in right next to the sheet that you just installed, and then it leaves this eighth inch gap. We've got one here, we've got one up there. Okay, now we go ahead and take off those clamps because otherwise it gets harder and harder as we go up to bend this thing out. These are being fastened by ring shank, three inch long hot dip galvanized nails. What I mentioned in one of the previous videos is that this pressure treated board at the very bottom is different than the rest of this lumber. It needs only hot dip galvanized nails. So instead of remembering to just use that on the bottom and then switching out my nails for the rest of it, just using hot dip galvanized everywhere. It doesn't rust, so I don't have to worry. It's just a little bit extra money and it goes a long way towards making me feel better that everything is fine. Now that it's attached, we're gonna touch up all these little nails and then we tape. So we're here with Jeff Key from Georgia Pacific Wood Products. And let me first say that of all of the product partners on this build, Georgia Pacific is one of the most enthusiastic and involved, and they have brought their team out today to help show us exactly how all this stuff should go in. Normally, I'm reading manuals, which is fine, but this isn't really nice. So thank you guys yeah. for coming. You bet. Glad to be here. Uh, so how does the science behind the force field system work? Yeah. So when we developed the product, we wanted to make sure that we kept a permeable product. Uh, OSB is permeable. The perm rating is usually between a 1.5 and a 4. And that's good. Just yes. So if, if Anything not... above 1 is good. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, we wanted to make sure we had a permeable product. Second of all, we wanted to make it easy to install. So we put our overlay here. You can see there's a smooth side of OSB and there's a rough side. So we put our overlay on the smooth side. That way we didn't have to have as much adhesive on our tape. So this is force field seam tape. It has a serrated edge. It doesn't have to be rolled in because you're on the smooth side. And you can tear it with your hand. No scissors. Very easy to use. Degumming my scissors for the past several years right, has been a right. thing. I had a really interesting conversation, by the way, the other day that will interest you. So somebody was putting house wrap on and they were advised by the manufacturer of the house wrap not to tape the bottom just in case water got into the wall and it wouldn't fill up the wall like a plastic bag with water. If there is water inside your wall, that's totally insane. And if you don't seal the bottom, you're not getting air tightness. You can't seal everything except for one gigantic seam and get expect to get performance out of it. So don't listen to people when they're talking crazy talk about this stuff. You want to be reasonable, make sure that you're using multiple systems to control <laughs> and not right. just depending on the one system, which is what every manufacturer is afraid of you doing. Um, so be smart about it. So you brought with you the inventor of this system to right. help us install right. some of this tape. Yes. Rick Jordan, inventor of the force field system. How are you doing, Corey? Thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. Today. All right. So as somebody who is still relatively learning phase with a nail gun. It makes me a little nervous to have Rick's face this close to my install of this system. The nailing pattern looks good. Nails positions look good. Um, like I said, the only thing we don't like are the little plastic tabs left over from the nail gun. Everything else looks great. So ultimately, when we're this close to the edge of the panel, it doesn't really matter because... Because we're going to seal the corner with a product we call Force Fill Corner. Um, it's an inside and outside corner protection piece that has a living hinge in the corbett. You take the product, you fold it like this, and it installs over the corner like this to give you a nice, tight corner that you're gonna tape both sides to. It's gonna help you with protecting so not your, nailing this in. We will, do you do tack this about every foot with a roofing or your stapler. Okay. okay. Then we tape down both sides, Corbett. That helps get your nice tight air seal at the corner. And we're gonna cover the fastener with the tape. Too. Correct. Okay, Yes. cool, that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, so that's brilliant on inside and outside corners. It's really, it's really designed more for inside corners, as you can tell. When you're doing an inside corner, to be able to tape a nice 90 degree corner right. is very hard. 
This folds in nice, simply. Once again, tack it about every foot, tape down both sides, and makes a nice 90 in your corner. Now, one of the details that I mentioned that we wanted to do, we had to wait for putting on the exterior insulation on the crawl space, is that I want to connect the force field to the concrete wall, not for water flashing, but for air tightness, which is one of the main features of this whole system. So, um, so if we just simply clean this, uh, which tape in the force field system is the one that we're going to be using for this? Uh, I would use the force field um, straight flashing tape here for that corbett. Okay. You might be familiar with flashing tape that is flexible. It's not flat. It's not right? flat. So that, that is a creped back tape, and that's specifically designed to go into the bottom window in your pan to make your pan for your seal. So it's crinkled, basically. It's crinkled, yes. So if you were to use this on something where you're trying to you know, control air leakage and water leakage, on a flat surface instead of bending it, which is what it's right. for in the yes. sill, that would be not good. No. That's just why we're using this. This is why we're going to use this tape. The profile of this tape is a lot thinner, Corbett. It also adheres very well, gives you a nice, smooth surface for water to transition over. All temperature, all weather flashing tape. It is a liner tape in this application. When you say all temperature. So these tapes are designed to go on down to zero. <laughs> We'll zero say, Fahrenheit. Zero Fahrenheit. Like it. Can go on with moisture on the panel. Wow. Very sticky, very aggressive. High temperatures, uh, we can go up to about 180 to F. <laughs> so in this application, what we want to do, since we're going to try to fit in a tight space here, we're going to peel off the top release liner first. Then I would position the tape about half on the panel, half off, like so. Okay. We're going to smooth in with our hand. Then on the back side, sometimes this can be tough. You're going to take the release liner, peel, work it into here, put it on the concrete. You always want to J roll the tape, especially thicker tapes like this. It gives you great initial heat adhesion. Also, on concrete, poor surface, you need to get the adhesive down into the concrete. Awesome. And then of course, you would continue this all the way down. Now, is this flexible? It is somewhat rigid. Yeah. Um, you don't want to be too flexible because if you're too flexible, you can destroy your adhesive. Huh. You overstretch the tape and then you've lost your the adhesive you're going to need to stick here and just stick to the wood and awesome. the concrete. Now, I've mentioned you, if you've watched this channel for a while, you've seen me at, apply tapes. What I love about it is it's quiet. It's a very zen experience. You're rubbing your building and massaging it. So I really like how this gets you in the mindset of being a detail-oriented person instead oh, of just spraying some yeah. sealant all over the place. I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there who have dirty work sites like this one. And so you want to just use your little brushy and make sure to make it clean because if you put this beautiful tape onto something that's dirty, it doesn't, it's right? Not gonna stick. It's not going to work. It so is, yeah, so we'll clean it first. Make sure all these little plastic bits are off. When you're putting tape on, we don't like to see nails poking out because it could cause tinning under tape, but it could also cause to break the surface of this tape and you lose your seal. We like to put a piece of tape, put this tape here, get it seated, work the tape in, and then we want to try to get a long run as smooth and as straight as possible centered over the joint. Everything's nice, smooth, and flat, and of course, hand terrible. Then we go back and we use our hands to smooth the tape in. This reduces the wrinkling. It also allows the tape to be seated by hand. No tools required. You get a nice smooth tape joint. So J roller on this? Do not need a J roller on this. J rollers are for thicker tapes, so have to have more pressure. You only need about two to three pounds of pressure on this. It's a pressure sensitive tape. Hand pressure is perfectly fine. Great. These tapes have been around 25 or 30 years. Um, people often ask, how long are they going to last? They're des designed to last 50 years or more. The life of the building. Life of the building. Now there's a nail sticking out up there because sometimes you miss. What you want to do at that point is go ahead and take that out and tape over that hole because if you just leave it in there then it's sticking into nothing. It's not helping anything and it's also now a point of no pressure puncture. You'll see some movement in the panels. You'll also see a little ridge develop during the day or maybe overnight. It's expansion of the wood in the panels with moisture with temperature. As long as the exterior edges of the tape are sealed it, it's fine. It's working just like it's designed to do. Deflect, drain, and dry is what you always want to see in these systems. Now, let me say that there are tapes that we've used on this channel that are utility tapes. You can use them for anything. 
This, I appreciate that this is a specialty tape. It was designed specifically for this task. So you would not go around using this for other things that this is not specified for. Always read your instructions. Thank you for writing instructions. So this tape is beautiful. It's for a specific purpose. That's why we've got multiple different kinds of tape from GP that we're gonna be using on this project, not using just one for everything. Thank you very much for inventing the system. Thank you, Corbett. Okay. That's the tape on. Now we've got the bottom strip here, and I just like to reiterate one thing. This is air sealing the gap between the concrete wall and all of this wood assembly right here in the floor framing. So now we've got one air seal that goes from the concrete wall to the sheathing. Then we wrap over the top of that, just in flashing style. Uh, the upper pieces go over the lower pieces. It probably doesn't matter much, but that's what we, we did. Um, you can see the corner piece here. All the fasteners are hidden under the tape. All the fasteners on the edges of the panels are hidden under the tape. So that means that we've gotten rid of all possible leakages, uh, both air and water, from those little nail head penetrations. One thing that I'd like to point out is that these plastic bits from the nail gun are a real pain in the butt. Some of them are very difficult to take off, and you have to go through every single one here and grab these things. What I am planning on doing next is just buying paper collated nails. It's such a pain in the butt that honestly, <laughs> that was the perfect one to demonstrate what a pain in the butt this is. Uh, make sure not to hammer these in so that they're flush before you take this out because it makes it even harder to get at these. So paper collated nails are so, so important. Now over here, you see that there's one in the field that has the plastic on it. This one, you don't have to worry about. Do not be anal enough that you're going around just grabbing all the plastic for no reason whatsoever. Over this is gonna go insulation. We don't need any tape over that. It's not a problem, just leave it. Now this is going to get fastened like this mechanically. I'm not gonna worry about taping over this right now because it doesn't really matter if water gets all the way to here, which is unlikely because of all the layers I've mentioned before. But if it does, it will go down and go onto the bare concrete wall where this dimple board is releasing the what's called hydrostatic tension. That's the tension of sticking water between one thing and another. That's why I don't have to worry about painting the wall. So I'm going to explain that in the waterproofing video that's coming up on the foundation wall. We're going to be backfilling this soon and we're going to put gravel out here as I mentioned. So that's next on the list. Now all we have to do is keep working our way up. We're going to put the roof on. We're going to get, be completely sheathed. Then we're going to cut openings and we're going to have the George Pacific team back out to talk about flashing and taping those openings so that the sheathing is continuous over those holes in the wall. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. Um, we're going to keep on air sealing the heck out of this place. Please like, subscribe, comment. Tune in next time.